First, uh, basically, I'm just going to give a few definitions, uh, raise a few issues to help you be, uh, think critically about orchard systems as we go through the day. Uh, so basically, I'm just going to be introducing things, uh, and I hope uh, pretty briefly here. Uh, the first question I think that we probably need to answer is just what is an orchard management system? What, what in fact, is it we're here to talk about? And I view an orchard system as uh, basically a comprehensive strategy uh, for the establishment and the management of a, of a commercial orchard. So it's a plan. It's, a, it's not just one thing, but it's a, it's a comprehensive plan. And th this strategy involves a, a number of considerations, a number of things that we have to be thinking about. And these are what I call the components of orchard systems, such as the rootstock, such as tree density, and so on. And it's choosing these components and putting them together into a package that really makes an orchard system. And the selection of all these components is based on uh, your environment, uh, the soil type you have, but most particularly on what your expectations are for yield and for fruit quality. You can't really decide on what system you're going to follow or what system you're going to develop unless you have a pretty good idea of what your expectations are in terms of productivity, and in terms of, of fruit quality. So it's basically then looking at these uh, components. It's basically looking at these components of an orchard system that, uh, that, that help you to, dis to design a, an orchard system. Now, I think you, most of you have seen this, this puzzle and, uh, and understand what the pieces are, but there's a couple of pieces that uh, perhaps are not so clear. Uh, we all know rootstock density and support system. Uh, tree quality refers to uh, the caliper of the tree, the branching on the tree, whether it's a generative tree or whether it's a, uh, uh, a more of a vegetative tree from the nursery. Tree arrangement is basically how the trees are in the orchard, whether they're single rows and double rows or in bed systems. And all those pieces of the puzzle, except for the bottom two, are decisions that you make before you ever plant the orchard. And sometimes the most important decisions you make are those that you, you decide before you plant the orchard. The bottom two are tree training components. That is, uh, how you position the limbs and whether, in fact, you remove any limbs and pruning. So those are the basic components, and that's, in a sense, the agenda for today. We're going to be discussing, basically, each piece of the puzzle. And it, it, it's important to realize that the, the pieces of the puzzle are selected uh, to be properly integrated. You can't select them all independently. When you, when you think of an orchard system, a slender spindle, for example, or a tatura trella, tatura trellis, you often kind of define that system by the tree training aspects. That is just the bottom two pieces of this puzzle. And I think I'd like to encourage you to, to think more broadly when you think about an orchard system because it doesn't pertain just to how it's pruned and trained. It also pertain, pertains to the rootstock, the tree density, the support system, and so on. So uh, don't just think about a system as how it's pruned and trained, but think about all the components uh, as, you, as you think about orchard systems. just a couple of definitions. As we go through the day, we're all gonna talk a lot probably about light distribution and light interception. And just a quick definition, light interception is the amount of light that strikes the tree and does not strike the orchard floor. In this particular case, you can see the shadow below the tree. Uh, it represents 60% uh, of the full sunlight. So in other words, uh, uh, only the tree only inter intercepted 60% of the light. This is an, an orchard characteristic, not an individual tree characteristic, however. When we talk about light interception, we talk about the amount of light interception by the, all the orchard tree canopy. But light distribution, or as it may be called, light transmission, uh, refers to the amount of light in any particular place within the tree canopy. In this particular case, uh, if you go up uh, a meter from the ground, the center of the tree, it says 10% there. Well, if, if full sunlight is 100%, uh, then only 10% of the light is getting to that particular point. 
So light distribution then is, is how much light rece is received by an individual apple or an individual spur in the tree canopy. Uh, light interception, not distribution as we have on the screen, but light interception is generally related to production. Light distribution is more related to fruit quality, fruit set, uh, flower bud development, and so on. Now, this is just a sort of a, well, the, if the effectiveness of each of these components, that is the rootstock or the tree density, uh, can be measured by its influence on light distribution and light interception. Uh, choosing a dwarfing rootstock, for example, uh, ensures that the canopy is relatively small and you have good light distribution. Uh, choosing a rootstock, for example, if you choose a more vigorous rootstock, has a larger tree will increase light interception. So each of these components then, its success in contributing to the orchard system depends on its contribution to light interception and light distribution. Okay, I'm just gonna talk about a little bit of data, and I can't see my screen here. Okay, can you still hear me? Good. Uh, <coughs> this is some data from a, an orchard systems trial in Washington State uh, with Fuji, where we compared uh, two training systems, vertical axe and central leader, but with the same rootstock. The rootstock was not a variable in this study, but tree density was, and you can see there uh, the two different tree densities. And, uh, and you can see there the yield of, of mature trees, years seven through 10. Uh, this is average yield per year. Uh, now, the, in comparing these two systems, again, we had the same rootstock, but we had different tree training. We also had uh, different uh, support system. And if, if we look then at the, at the yield, we can see that the yield from the central leader was much lower. Uh, uh, and in fact, it was di in direct proportion to the tree density. And that figure in brackets, that 23.2, that's what it would be if you actually adjusted the yield of the vertical axe for the lower density for the central leader trees. So we might look then and say, well, the explanation for why these central leader trees had lower yield was because they had lower tree density. But I think if we look at it in a little more detail, uh, we may come to realize that that wasn't the entire reason. Uh, over on the right, you can see canopy volume. Uh, and we can see that, yes, the central leader trees did have a lower canopy volume. But you almost would think that a tree on 26 by year 7 through 10 would have filled its space. And therefore, the initial tree density would not be so important anymore. But uh, my, my take on this is that the, the issue is, is not tree density uh, in this case. And it's really not, uh, it's not the, the way the trees were trained. It's the fact that the central leader did not have a support system. Uh, trees on only 26, uh, without support, uh, develop into a round shaped tree. They do not grow tall and they do not fill their space. And so the main factor here probably was the trees were not supported rather than they had a low tree density. And the point of discussing this is just that as we look at orchard systems, we have to look at all the components to decide which are making the major contribution. Now in the same trial, there was slender spindle and vertical axe, but each on the same rootstock again. And you can see they were at different tree densities. Now the variables here, one was tree density, the other was the training, but they were both supported in this case. Both the central leader and the vertical axis trees were supported. And when we look at yield, average yield, we use seven through 10, we find that there's really no difference between the two systems. But the vertical axe could have a much lower yield, the figure in brackets, if, uh, if in fact we just considered its lower tree density. But in fact, it overcame this tree density. And uh, the question is, uh, how was it able to overcome that tree density? Uh, the trees were all supported. And the reason in this case that it overcame its low tree density was that the vertical axis trees were trained to a height of three to three and a half meters, whereas the slender spindle trees were only trained to two meters. And what that did, that allowed the vertical axis trees then to have a canopy volume 
uh, comparable to the slender spindle on a per hectare basis. So again, this is just to try to make you think critically of, of various components in the orchard system to, con to find out which is actually contributing to the success of that particular system. And just one more brief comparison of a, of a study that involved uh, Tatura trellis, V-spindle, and double row, all at the same tree density, compared with the high-tech system at a lower density. A Tatura trellis uh, is basically a palmette system where the, all the branches are trained up and down the row. But in the case of Tatura, that, that whole canopy is off on an angle. So it's an angled palmette system. The V-spindle basically are, are spindle trees, three-dimensional cone-shaped trees, but, but tipped over at an angle. Uh, the, the double row is basically a high-tech tree, but at the same density in a double row. And, and high-tech is, is basically a combination of spindle and vertical axe, but in this case, at a lower density. And now if we look at the yields uh, from these systems, uh, we, the trial included Fuji and uh, Brayburn, Fuji on 9, Brayburn on 26. Uh, and if we look at the annual yield uh, for the, the, the three high density systems, they're all the same, 47, 46, 48 for Fuji and 45, 45, 40. No significant differences between any of these systems. But the high tech system was lower and lower in density, uh, lower in tree density and lower in yield in proportion to that tree density. Well, again, the question is, is, is that a tree density effect? And in this particular case, uh, it probably is a tree density effect because the trees on Molly 9 uh, did not fill their space at the lower tree density. And the Braeburn trees on 26 did not also fill their space even by 10 years. So in fact, the tree density effect did last a full, uh, a full 10 years in this, in this particular trial, just because the rootstocks or the, or the varieties were weak. And uh, the last comparison here at the bottom, you can see this particular trial, half the trees uh, were limited to two meters in height, six and a half feet. The other trees were allowed to grow to three meters in height. And if we look at the difference then in yield between the two, uh, the three meter trees were 125%, 25% higher in yield uh, based on the average of the, of the last four years of the trial. So uh, the training in this, in this particular case up to three meters had a very significant effect on production. And the concept of a pedestrian orchard, uh, uh, in this case, did not lead to, uh, to the highest production. It was about taller trees that were more beneficial. So, and even I can't move that, but it's, it's okay. Uh, that's really all I'm going to say. I, I wanted to make a few definitions. I wanted you to think about what the contribution of rootstock might be or of tree training might be or support might be in terms of orchard systems. We're going to discuss each of those points today, but I wanted to just be thinking that uh, we must be critical in terms of our evaluation of these those components. <clears throat>